Hey baby. Hey baby. Hey baby. Hey baby. Hey baby. Oh. Hey baby. Hey baby. Hey baby. Hey baby. Hi. Baby mega mind. I am just so upset. I was hit by a car. I saw a rat in the kitchen. Turns out it was one of my co-workers. And I just say, up a kebab. And he's like, what? And I'm like, up a kebab. Salama pagi, up a kebab. I had the dog. I don't know where the dog is. I know where your dad is, but um, I'm not going to tell you about that. I am so upset. If you don't come over right now, I might hurt somebody else. I'm going to kill the Tamagotchi. The brick is quite transphobic. I'm a transvestite, not a cheap drag queen. Full blown out domestic. The police were cold. Someone thought that a dog was being abused. It was just me screaming. Domestic? Ew! A dirty old pre-transition pic of me. No matter how many times I try and get that one removed. I think the live organisms from the kombucha are having a wild one with the mimosa I just drank. My stomach is having a frat party. Lady Gaga, eat your heart out. Revolting. Tipped up TV from the tantrum. Jemima G stole Swiss fish. He said the keys are beneath a rock in Tirac. For me, it was just so casual to have an influx of old men messaging me on Snapchat. <laughs> Hey baby, I have returned to Seoul, South Korea once again. I am actually here for super exciting and life-changing cosmetic surgeries pertaining to my transgender transition. away from a post-operative infection like some of you have been sharing. I've just been taking time away from the internet to really heal after a very eventful few months, so thank you for respecting that. But now I'm back for this video. I'm not back back, but I'm back to let you know that I'm still alive. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I'm really enjoying sitting in front of this ring light. I'm making this video to answer your most asked questions. to answer your must ask questions in relation to my facial feminization surgeries at IZ Hospital in Seoul. I was traveling with my chosen medical tourism agency, Dogfinder Korea. So I'll be answering all of these questions on my Nintendo DS. First question, what? Now someone's having a shower above me. This video is just not supposed to happen. How can you even see me? I swear these windows are tinted. Oh, and she's coming out to have a look too. Okay, this house is like a clown car. So many people. What the WTF did you do to your face? Um, well, I had four procedures with three surgeons under the one operation at ID Hospital. So I would say I've done a, a fair bit of what WTF to my face. It's changed quite a bit, but overall I would say I still look like the same person and the integrity of my previous features are still very much present. 
just much more softer. Starting with my feline jaw contouring, whereby my jaw and chin were shaven down to be softer, lighter, and more feminine overall, opposed to my previous jawline, which resembled a dustpan. My rhinoplasty with Dr. Shiyong Bang. My nose previously had been crooked, bulbous, uh, representative of my X chromosome, so I just had to sort of remove her from my life. She was holding me back from my, my goals and ambition. She was like a witch. Also, is it misogynistic that a witch is a witch and like a male gets to be a glorified wizard? Literally, like there's no other term for a witch. Why am I green-faced with a bulbous, supple and nose? That a wizard gets to go around with a wand and a cloak? I just, I have an issue with that. And if I want to know the terminology for a transgender witch, because I'm sure it's out there, something akin to like tramp or hack, old bag. My rhinoplasty with Dr. Chi Young Bang has transformed my outlook in life. I'm so happy to have had him as my rhinoplasty surgeon. He was so prepared in the consultation. I believe Anna from Duck Finder Korea works up ID Hospital on what her client is seeking. And then you have the pre-consultation consultation where you agree or disagree to what you've already agreed to essentially with Dr. Van Korea and then the doctors come in one at a time already totally planned and ready to go ahead with the consultation. Anyway so Dr. Cheong Bang already had my southern nose drawn out on his iPad so ugly and then he had my future nose and I was looking over like yeah I want that one give me that one. Dr. Cheong Bang in my consultation suggested that I shorten my nose because it was quite long. It was literally, it was like having a leap of faith into my mouth. She just wanted to escape. I shared my concern that if I were to shorten my nose, would my nostrils be visible? Because after my six years of nightclubbing, I'm telling you, it's like a decaying carcass up there. I just don't want people seeing what's going on. And this was all translated through a middle woman back to Chiang Bang, and he said, don't worry, that won't be the case. So I put my trust in his hands and of course, I've come away with the cutest little nose. It is, oh my god, the side profile. Hi, you have some room. Can you, is this cute? I, oh! If only Dr. Chiang Bang could work on my man arm. What other surgeries did I have? Oh, I had my forehead reduction. It reduced my forehead, I guess. I don't know. Um, you can't tell the result right now currently because I'm wearing a wig. My forehead had previously been quite long. Okay, it was huge. Before, when I said my jawline represented a dustpan, my forehead just continued the dustpan-esque moment. It honestly resembled a Wall Street banker with a receding hairline and a mistress. You know, all that stress and anxiety. Oh, I also resembled this guy that I once kissed at a nightclub for a free drink. And he just... Uh, me. Like, I resembled him without the wig. Receding, yes. Wall Street banker. Sort of. I mean, I'm not sure if investing in Bitcoin and making it big really constitute something so glamorous. Bitcoin investors usually walk around the house all day in pajamas, whereas like a Wall Street banker, suit and tie, I don't know, it's kind of more attractive. I think my forehead was what caused the most dysphoric feelings for me in terms of how I felt from within, represented on the outside. Like, it's, oh, I look at old photos and I just feel sick looking at it. Oh, my forehead is so huge. It makes me so miserable every time I look in the viewfinder. In my consultation, the doctor suggested my forehead wasn't necessarily so long. I looked at him like he was crazy. But apparently in Korea, there's a beauty standard whereby a longer forehead is more admirable. But it's just not for me. Like, I know how I feel about my own face. And so... I tried to get him to lower it more and more. I was like, I just want the shortest forehead possible. But he told me it would look really weird. Thankfully, I've come out of the operation and I'm so glad that we focused on just rounding out the edges on the side because if we had have lowered it from here more, I probably would have looked a little bit crazy. Always trust your surgeons because they're the ones that have studied it. They have the experience. Oh, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Have you got money? I love your voice, it is the cutest thing. The final procedure I had was fat grafting, whereby fat was removed from a donor part of my body and injected into my face. It was probably, 
I will be honest with you guys, I got a little bit trigger happy with the procedures and I just threw the fat grafting in the mix. I didn't really know much about it when I decided to go forth with it, but it has actually turned out to be one of my favorite procedures. It's made my face look so plump and so cute. I really struggle to gain weight to my face. When I do gain weight to my face, it's usually post-depressive episode and it's just not in the right places. Dr. Kiyomi Lee Magical Hands has really molded everything into place. I've had it injected into my chin, my cheeks, my under eyes specifically, and my forehead to give it a super curved appearance. Like from front on, you'd probably say I'm hot, but from the side, I look, I look adorable. Why did you choose Korea over somewhere in the West? I chose Korea because I love the result of their surgical procedures. Worldwide, we all follow beauty standards in our society and that is reflected in the outcomes of our surgical procedures. Particular clinics in Seoul are the most advanced and best in the world for jaw contouring procedures, which was a must considering it was something I definitely wanted to do. Women walk out of clinics in Seoul looking like literal dots. It's so adorable, so gorgeous, and I think the most feminine surgical procedures there are, opposed to places in the West whereby integrity of your facial features are more so favored. I've known of surgeons in the West to literally keep a nose crooked just so it doesn't look like you've had a rhinoplasty. But what's the point? You go, how did you walk in high heels three days out of surgery? Look, I have walked in high heels 3 p.m. out of a nightclub. I did think I was gonna pop a stitch every step I took in my high heels. Head to toe PVC, I did sort of feel like I was gonna faint. Especially once the nurse whipped out the antibiotics injection for my ass cheek. I was like, I haven't even eaten breakfast. Well, I couldn't, I was on a liquid diet. My recommendation to you is, unless you have a camera crew following you, don't dress to impress. They have also had some questions ask me, what was it like being transgender and going through all of these procedures in Seoul at the hospital and with Doc Finder Korea? I didn't feel like I was treated any differently. For me at least, pronouns throughout were always she, her, and all of the staff, Anna included, were so super supportive and yeah, very lovely. On the day that I did come out full head to toe PVC, little handbag and bandages, and I was waiting in my hotel lobby outside of the elevators. So when the doors opened and that's my look, her jaw dropped and she was like, ah, you look so gorgeous. It was so cute and support. Medications inclusive of antibiotics and pain medication to take in the seven days post-op. There is method to the madness of why I haven't felt anything post-surgery. I know it sounds crazy. If a surgical procedure is done correctly, the nerves kind of get dismissed or die off, a bit of both, um, in the incisional areas. I couldn't feel my nose for maybe two months. I couldn't feel along the incisional scar of my forehead for maybe three or four months. With the jaw, our bones aren't connected to our nerve endings, so you're not gonna feel that anyway. My whole jawline regained a sensitivity uh, before two weeks post-op, and it's only been a progression since then. So invasive. I've ordered food halfway through recording. Aching to my newfound heritage. I'm biologically Scottish Australian, but I'm now surgically Korean, so I just want to follow suit. Milk is. When I die, can we bury me with a couple of these in the coffin? Just in case I wake up. <laughs> Sorry about the Nini chicken intermission. I'm starving. It was so good. Don't get me started. Would you recommend a medical tourism agency. I can only speak on my own experience and I would say everything I went through was not possible without my personal case manager from Duck Finder Korea, Anna. Her assistance is honestly, when I say above and beyond, I've never had anyone in my life go so above and beyond. Oh, maybe my parents. Yeah, well, anyway, like Anna, the thing that she has done to just make everything run so smoothly, in the moment, all I could think about was Thank goodness I've got her here to hail the taxis to and from every appointment. Right from the moment I contacted Doc Finder Korea, I was speaking with Anna. She talked to different clinics and hospitals to find me the best choice and also gave me choice. I was expecting her to maybe reply with one place and say this is where you should go. I was honestly hoping for ID. I didn't really know how it worked. I was like, please be ID, please be. And I got this long list of places and I'm like, Anna, what is going on? She did outline that considering what I wanted was FFS, ID Hospital could provide the most experienced and educated doctors in the field of the procedures I wanted. 
all in one operation. Oh, and then she also talked about like the health benefits of going to ID because opposed to clinics in Seoul, it is a standout alone just being a hospital. When you go to a smaller clinic, it might just be a one surgeon practice, which already outrules me going there anyway. Good communication with your doctor is key in every surgical procedure. And so having Anna as a translator with me every step of the way throughout the hospital, at the local chemist, even in the taxi so that we were on time. Anna would step in so many times at ID Hospital to really elaborate and explain upon things, but also get my point across with the surgeons. She also provided a port of call in a foreign city. Being able to contact Anna via WhatsApp at any moment throughout the night, not that I did, I didn't really have any issues. Did I? No, I didn't. I don't know. But if I needed to, I know she would have responded. Transport is such a huge factor in this because it's actually quite difficult to get a taxi in Seoul and they don't have Uber. They've definitely got Uber Eats. Don't worry, like you'll be fed. But the Uber situation's like a little bit, because the taxis are so affordable and readily available, but just a little bit difficult to hail as a foreigner. Like I'm not from New York City. I don't know how to do that. Especially when I'm like in bandages. So it was so great to have Anna picking me up from the lobby, taking me directly to the hospital on time. She'd also send reminders because one night I was out at 7-Eleven at like 1am. I'm so embarrassed for ID Hospital and Anna to see this. I was running around Gangnam all hours of the night. So I was out at 1am and I get this message from Anna and it says, don't forget you've got an appointment tomorrow. So I had to race home, go to bed, wake up in the morning. Before contacting Doc Finder Korea, I was skeptical whether or not I needed a medical tourism agent because I felt like I've traveled, but after coming out on the other side, yes, I did need a medical tourism agent. There was no way I was getting through this without Anna. Doc Finder Korea services all come with no additional costs to your surgery quote, so I mean, you might as well. The services are accredited by the Korean government and they're able to be provided at no additional cost because it works with referral services with the clinics and hospitals. That's the team. How did your family react to your new face? Uh, changing my face was quite emotional for me because I felt like I was sort of turning my back on my family who have always supported me by telling me I'm so beautiful and lucky to have the facial structure that I did have. So in changing it, I had this immense sense of guilt. Two weeks out of surgery, I really did look a little bit busted. A little bit, this is a huge understatement. Two weeks out of surgery, I looked so busted. I still had like a bit of a, a speech impediment from where the stitches had been in my mouth. So seeing my mum at the outpot, she was a little bit shocked for sure. She said my eyes had changed because I was just puffy. My post-plastic surgery speech impediment kind of became my personality trait. It was the first thing I would whip out whenever meeting a new person. So when it left the building, I was a little bit disappointed. I don't even know why I had a speech impediment. Nonetheless, seeing my mum, she was definitely shocked, but over time she's really grown to it. And I think more than anything, now she can see that I don't look like a different person, but obviously, even two months ago, I really did look so different with the swelling and I looked like a creature, let's be real. It was just a bit of a shock for everybody involved. My grandma told me not to go ahead with the surgeries, literally days before I went. She said, you're so beautiful, you don't need to change your face, you've got the same nose that I do. And I was like, granny, you've broken your nose twice. And I walked away thinking, I'm gonna do it. After the surgery, when I did see my granny again, she teared up saying that I was so beautiful, more so than ever. And that was really emotional because she was probably the number one person, we'll put my mum aside in the situation, the number one person that I really felt guilt for changing my face for because she definitely is the one person to always say how beautiful I am. But now she's obsessed with it. She points at this horrible photo of me pre-op and laughs at it every time we're like at the door about to leave her house. She says she can't stop talking about my new face at the yacht club with all her friends. I can only imagine the conversation. My grandson, who's now my granddaughter, went to Korea to get a new face and she's gonna be on 60 Minutes talking about her shop daddy on Sunday night. The moment my granny leaves the yacht club, the girls must turn to each other and discuss, God, Joan's got dementia. It's taken her by a toll. Did you see any K-pop idols while you were in Seoul? That is the cutest question. Um, that is so cute. 
Now, well, yes, obviously, they're literally plastered everywhere, but no. The moment you enter Incheon Airport, there's like BTS. Okay, what really weirds me out is when people talk about like old K-pop groups, and I'm like, oh, honey, no, they're not, they're not present. <laughs> They're all in the army now. Seventeen. Oh my gosh. Okay, Seventeen is quite popular. I love their song Home. That that's the song that kind of got me through all of the operations. Where was this going? Late at night in Gangnam, you apparently can run into aspiring idol groups. I don't know. I I kind of don't believe it. Even though I think we did run into a few. The only people on the streets on a weeknight in Gangnam are those recovering from plastic surgery and also aspiring idols, I guess, because there would be these groups of decked out, like Balenciaga head to toe children. They were so young, but like pink and purple and blue hair, so tired. I mean, I looked a bit busted and tired and recovering from surgery, but they looked more tired. And apparently they just practice sing, dance all day, and that one hour period at 12 a.m. is their only free time before they go back to work. Allegedly. I don't know. Korea is so strange like that because I also saw, you know Hello My Twenties? Whenever that, the girl with the orange hair that used to be in a girl group, whenever she had issues with her like three different boyfriends, she'd be screaming on the street and the boyfriend would just keep walking ahead and she'd like be hitting him and everyone keeps walking and the boyfriend doesn't pay her any mind. That literally happened on the street. This girl was just screaming and screaming and I was like, have I done something? And then she just whooshes past me, and I'm like, careful with her plastic surgery. I didn't say that, but it was in my mind. I was like, <gasps> she's like, <sighs> screaming as she runs, and then she's like hitting this guy, and I'm like, <gasps> and then I sort of thought, oh, this is like the full on Korean experience. I'm literally in a K drama right now. I'm looking around for the JTBC camera crew, like, where are they? Am I gonna be in the back of this? But apparently, that's just that's something that actually happens. Because I saw it another time, and I also saw so many people that, you know, had the rhinoplasty in that. Because everyone says when you travel to Seoul, you'll run into a lot of people busted face like I had. But I think because I had it as well, I wasn't as, like, impressed. I was just fulfilling other tourists' fantasies of the Seoul experience. Long answer to such a simple question. I saw lots of memorabilia, I heard lots of BTS, and I may have seen aspiring K-pop idols. They just happen to be like 14. Honestly, it could have been tomorrow, X today, or whatever it's called, X Tuesday. I love the song Crown. And summer. Summer. The only idol I saw were my surgeons at 